What is up guys? In today's video, by popular demand, I'm going to be showing you guys how to put raw assembly onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, the way that we do this is actually surprisingly simple, so I think you'll be really impressed with how quickly you can get it to work too on your device. I have some starter code here. It looks a lot like the Blink LED tutorial. You have your top two lines where we include some libraries. Uh, these three lines here, we define GPIO on being one, off being zero, and the LED pin being 25. There's no change to previous tutorials from there. Uh, and then here, we're going to start with C, the way this is going to work is we're going to actually write a function in assembly and then we're going to link it in at compile time so that we have control over what assembly goes onto the device. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called loop. That function is actually going to be an infinite loop that the Raspberry Pi Pico cannot return from. This will be a good test to make sure that our assembly is actually getting written, right? So if we do GPIO put onto the LED pin, we put uh, GPIO on, and then we call our loop function, and then we put GPIO put to the LED pin, GPIO off. In theory, if this doesn't return, this LED should stay on and never come back, right? So that'll be a good test. So now we have to actually write the loop function. How do we write that in assembly? Well, first we have to make a new file, and I'm gonna save this file as assembly.s, now we're writing assembly, right? This is ARM assembly like all my other tutorials. Uh, first, what we have to do is we have to export the symbol of the loop function so that the compiler can use it, right? And the way in assembly to do that using the standard assembler is global loop that says, I, in this file, I'm going to declare a symbol called loop and the, the object file that we create will export it. Then we're going to define the loop function. And the loop is a label where we branch to loop, right? So this will infinitely just run in a circle here forever. No, uh, no real tricks there. All right, so let's walk through this again. We turn our Raspberry Pi Pico on, we set the LED to be a uh, GPIO output port, then we turn the LED on, we go into this infinite loop, we should never get here, and in this infinite loop, we loop forever. Okay, so how do we compile this? CMake makes this very easy. Um, on your project line, you need to make sure you include assembly as an allowable language on your project. And then in your add executable lines, you're just gonna add assembly.s. That tells CMake when you build your project to include this as one of the creatable files or the object files you wanna link in. Uh, and it knows to use the ARM assembler to do that. So it's actually really simple. Uh, and then you're going to do the standard make dir build, export your SDK file, CD into the build directory, and then CMake dot dot. So we make. Takes a minute because CMake is actually building the entire Raspberry Pi Pico library. And there we go, boom, we have our executable. And one easy way that we can actually confirm that our loop got written into our code as raw assembly is we can do arm none eabi object dump tac d on the output name of our file, which in my case is assembly on rp2040.elf. Pipe that into less. And what we're actually seeing here is the full output of the entire firmware that will go onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. There's a lot of extra code here that you didn't write that the Pico SDK actually created for you. But if you type slash and hit loop, it's gonna look for the word loop in our output. And there's a bunch of them here, but eventually after we look for it a few times by hitting slash and enter, we will find our function here, right? So we actually can see main goes out and it calls standard IO in it all. It calls GPIO in it. Um, and then we go to our loop. Great, okay, so that's in the code. So now let's actually put it onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. So the way we do that, we copy our assembly.uf2 file, which is just a different file format. And I have actually a video coming out on what the uf2 file actually is, but it's pretty interesting how they made this work. Um, copy that onto media user uh, here, boom. And so now you can see over here, I have the Raspberry Pi Pico put out. The code is running but we don't get to the part where we turn off the LED, which is pretty cool, right? Okay, so now we've confirmed that we are in this loop and our code is running infinitely forever and the processor is very sad. Um, so now that we have the ability to write assembly raw for the Raspberry Pi Pico, who cares? Like, what are we gonna do? Um, people typically do this when they have code that they want to not fail um, or that they want complete control over what happens. So we are actually on the processor in supervisor mode so we have the control of the processor completely and we can do some really cool stuff. Like for example, um, there are some instructions in assembly where you can disable interrupts, for example. So 
being on the processor, there is a chance that things like timers and the UART interrupts and stuff will go off and it could interrupt your code. And if this is time sensitive code, you don't want that to happen. So what we can actually do in this function that we call an assembly is this thing called CPS interrupt disable all of our interrupts. So what this instruction does, it's a, uh, a supervisor mode instruction. It masks the flags in the processor that tell the processor to do interrupts. So as we execute the rest of this code here, there is no way for this code to get interrupted unless the processor crashes, right? Like it, it will not respond to IRQs or interrupt requests. Um, so we can do some do time sensitive stuff and then to re-enable the, the requests, right? Because we don't want to just leave the processor like this forever. Uh, we want to do CPS interrupt enable these flags and then we can branch exchange uh, LR. Actually, sorry, branch LR. And that's the assembly for return. Now, when making this video, I actually had a really weird error where I was trying to show you guys that you could do GPIO puts from within the assembly file, but I actually ran into a linker issue where it doesn't know where the GPIO put function lives. Uh, the reason for that actually is that the GPIO put function is an inline function in the Pico SDK, which means it's not externally linkable from assembly files. It was kind of weird. I had to figure that out. It took me a long time. Um, but the way that we can actually do GPIO puts is we have to write a wrapper function uh, called my GPIO put, uh, and I'll take a pin and a value, and it's just going to call GPIO put for us in C, pin value, and then return. And then from within the assembly function, we can actually call my GPIO put and take out this global here. Uh, and that works. So we can set up the registers, right? To do um, R0, actually load into register R0, uh, 25, load into R1, 0, and then we can do my GPIO put. And what this should do is this should go here. We go into our sensitive function where we do time sensitive stuff. And in this case, we're turning off the LED, and then it should turn the LED off. So we should be able to remove this, and the LED should, for like, 10 clock cycles turn on, and then it should turn off. Let's test that real quick. So we're gonna make this, copy that, boom. And the file uh, was put onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. It turned the device on and it turned it off really quick. Anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.